I must have the wrong house. Uh, sister, I waited up all night for you. It's a long way from Edison, New Jersey. <laughs> oh, finally. Real coffee. He's here. I got you something from far away. What's this? You're my present this year. What are you two doing? Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. For those of you that are new to the channel, here's something with which you may not be familiar. I have a Patreon. And once per month, the individuals on my Patreon can vote on the topic of a 10 minute testing. This month, the overwhelming victor was Edison. Like, the format. So I'm going to take a page from 2020 Joseph and try and give you a quick introduction into three of the format's most fun decks. Presenting Edison Format. And don't worry, I know you subway surfered freaks don't have the mental capacity to sit through a 10 turn game, so I deliberately picked some of the most explosive replays I got. Here they are. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. So with that, let's begin with my personal favorite deck in the room, Diva Hero Beat. This deck's an evolution on an evolution. The Homo Sapiens to pre-Time Wizard Edison's Hetero Sapiens, this deck innovates two separate archetypes. Firstly, the anachronistic Diva Hero List, a combo-oriented strategy that makes use of Malicious and Deep Sea Diva to frequently set up an Armory Arm and Colossal Fighter OTK. And secondly, the Room Temperature IQ Hero Beat, which aims to use Neos Alias, Skill Drain, and Gemini Spark to control the game one Gemini Alpha at a time. The former had a real problem with bricking. It could combo a hundred different ways, but sometimes it opened too malicious, and the latter had a problem with flexibility. Eschewing the extremely powerful extra deck made it a sitting duck for big men who hit hard. Enter this. Playing enough divas to consistently make powerful five-star synchros, enough hero enablers to make use of Gemini Spark and Hero Blast and Miracle Fusion, the glue that keeps them all together. So with that, let's get into the card by card. We've got one copy of DD Warrior Lady, Searchable Off of Rhoda, three Deep Sea Diva, three copies of Neos Alias, which is a Gemini monster, which when normal summoned becomes Neos Alias, you will almost never do this. One copy of Elemental Hero Ocean, which during your standby phase can target a hero monster you control or in the graveyard, return it to the hand. Obviously getting back Stratos is incredibly powerful, but importantly, this is also a water hero, fulfilling both halves of Ab Zero. We've got one copy of Stratos, two Honest and two Spined Gilman. Make no mistake, this is the best card in the deck. We've got one Brain Control, two Emergency Call, a Future Fusion, Triple Gemini Spark, which allows you to tribute a face-up level 4 Gemini Monster, target a card in the field, destroy it, and if you do draw a card, one Heavy Storm, Triple Miracle Fusion, which can Fusion Summon an Elemental Hero Fusion Monster from your extra deck by banishing Fusion Materials mentioned on it from your field or graveyard. One Mystical Space Typhoon, one Rota, two Bottomless Trap, a Call, the Haunted, a Compulsory Evacuation Device, Triple Dimensional Prison, Double Hero Blast, which allows you to target an Elemental Hero Normal Monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, that if your opponent controls any monsters that attack less than that, you can destroy it one of them. A Mirror Force, a Solemn Judgment, a Starlight Road, a Torrential Tribute, and a Trap Dust Shoot. In the extra, we've got Chimera Tech, Absolute Zero, which can be, when Fusion Summoned, uh, gains 500 attack for each water monster in the field except itself, and if it leaves the field, it destroys all monsters your opponent controls. Now, importantly, the rules with respect to hidden information zones are different in Edison format. Now, if you Compulsory Evacuation Device in Absolute Zero, nothing happens, but back in the day, it would trigger. This puts this a head above pretty much everything else in the format, and hence, it's the focus of our deck. We've got a guy in here as well, a double Cataster, one Ancient Fairy Dragon, a Black Rose, a Brianak, a Colossal Fighter, a Goyo, a Magical Android, a Stardust, and a Thought Ruler. So with that, let's check out a game. Our first match is up against Vayu Turbo, and thankfully we have won the die roll. In Edison, you get to draw a sixth card on your first turn, so really no reason not to take the play. We've opened good. I mean, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, pretend like this isn't an incredibly powerful hand. Deep Sea Diva plus Stratos is exactly where you want to be, but you really don't want to see two copies of her. Uh, we're going to go Diva into Gilman. I feel a little freer to do that since we have the follow-up play in hand as well. We're going to go for a Magical Android and then screw up Enphase Math, gaining 6,003 life points before Rector 
rectifying our mistake. Magical Android, just a generically very good five-star synchro to go into. Not only does it gain you a little bit of life points, um, it also gets you a little more ahead in situations where Cataster has a bad matchup against what your opponent is playing and threatens Honest, which this deck does play. Uh, we're going to set one card, and they are going to set one of their own. It is a Raikou. Usually the set card here is a Raikou. I would expect to be running into it. I'm going to play around it as best I can, um, but we're going to get a lot of information from our opponents seeing what they mill. Um, notably, back in the day, you would expect this to be Lightsworn 100 times out of 100, uh, but Vayu Turbo also plays this card as a way to access the extremely powerful Charge of the Light Brigade and potentially put a Vayu into the graveyard, and just milling is extremely strong as well. Um, here we're going to attack first with this copy of Magical Android, expecting that if they want to destroy a monster, they will destroy the Android, and we'll get to keep the Stratos and get in for 1800. We get to test for Gores as well, which is extremely important. They're going to go for the back row instead, very defensible play. They'll pop the Compulsory Evacuation Device, and that Tragoeta in Graveyard is really good news because it means the only thing I really have to be concerned about is Gores here. We're going to get in for 18. I feel like this is a good enough Gores that they would take it, and they don't, uh, so I figure we don't need to play around it for the rest of the game. Our opponent's going to go to their main phase and unfortunately has a very big turn. They're going to begin with a copy of Black Whirlwind, then normal summon a Sirocco the Dawn. Uh, because they're playing copies of Raikou Lights 100, they're not on a more aggressive uh, Blackwing variant, so I am at least under the impression I'm not going to die this turn. They're not going to get like a Bora and kill me. Instead, they're going to get a copy of Gale the Whirlwind. They're then going to special summon that Gale the Whirlwind out and activate its effect, targeting our copy of Magical Android. This is not great news for us because they're going to be able to clear the entire field. Gale the Whirlwind over the Magical Android now at 1200 attack, and the Sirocco over over our Stratos for 200 as well. Uh, still, our hand looks absolutely incredible, and provided they don't do anything else, we could go for a game shot here. With the Tragoeta in Graveyard, I, I figure it's probably worth doing. They're going to make a Stardust Dragon and pass back to us. Uh, let's get it going. Uh, we're going to begin with another copy of Deep Sea Diva. That's going to grab the second copy of Spined Gilman from deck. I love playing two copies of this. It just means you don't ever have to fear drawing it. It's a 1700 body no matter what. It's just quite nice. We'll then follow it up with a Miracle Fusion, banishing a Deep Sea Diva and an Elemental Hero Stratos for a huge absolute zero because of that 500 boost for every water on the field. And then we'll follow it up with a Brain Control targeting the Stardust Dragon. We're going to go to the battle phase, try and get in. Our opponent's at 6200, and we know the Trag is in the graveyard. As a result, they're going to scoop, and we are going to take it. Next, let's take a look at what's widely considered to be one of the best decks in the format, Vayu Turbo. While Blackwing was already a known quantity in terms of power level, Vayu the Emblem of Honor took a little longer to catch on. After all, who needs a tuner that can't tune? Well, it turns out in a format full of Armageddon Knight and Dark Greffer, getting monsters into the graveyard isn't particularly difficult. This deck also sports one of the best ways to manipulate the number of monsters in the graveyard to facilitate powerful cards like Dark Armed Dragon, and one of the best ways to play around horrible format-destroying floodgates like Royal Oppression. Did you know Vayu doesn't banish for cost? Let's go through the individual cards. We're playing two copies of Armageddon Knight, which when summoned can send a dark monster from your deck to the graveyard, one Gale the Whirlwind, which can special summon itself if you control Blackwing other than Gale the Whirlwind, and once per turn can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, that targets attack and defense become half its current attack and defense. Besides the fact that it's a tuner and has a fantastic star line, it also gets over Stardust Dragon with ease. Three copies of Sirocco the Dawn, if only your opponent controls a monster, you can normal summon or set this without tributing, and then once per turn during your main phase one, you can target a Blackwing you control, it gains attack equal to the combined attack of Blackwing monsters on the field that is not itself, and it's the only thing that can attack for the remainder of the turn. Three copies of Vayu, the Emblem of Honor. This face-up card on the field cannot be used as a synchro material, and if it's in the graveyard, you can target a non-tuner Blackwing in your graveyard, banish this card and that card, and if you do, special summon a Blackwing synchro monster from your extra deck, whose levels equal the total levels of the banished monsters, but negate its effects. Two Caius, one Card Trooper, one Dark Arm Dragon, double Dark Greffer, which can be special summoned by discarding a level 5 or higher Dark Monster, and can discard a Dark Monster to send a Dark Monster from your deck to the graveyard, one Plague, three Raikou, a Spirit Reaper, and a Super Nimble Mega Hamster. After that, we've got spells, a Brain Control, an Allure of Darkness, a Burial from a Different Dimension, a Charge of the Light Brigade, a Heavy Storm, a Mystical Space Typhoon, and a Reinforcement of the Army. Always a good sign when all of the spells are limited. We've got two copies of Bottomless Trap Hole, Triple Dimensional Prison, Double Dust Tornado, a Mirror Force, a Royal Oppression. Despite the fact that this is one of the best decks at playing against Royal Oppression, it's also one of the best shells for it. A copy of Solemn Judgment, a Torrential Tribute, and a Trap Dust Shoot in the extra. We've got a Cataster, an Armory Arm, a Black Rose Dragon, Blackwing, Silverwind, the Ascendant. This is your eight star monster. Blackwing Armed Wing, this is your six star monster. Blackwing Armor Master, this is your seven star monster. We've got a Brianak, a Colossal Fighter, a Dark End Dragon, a Goyo Guardian, a Double Stardust Dragon, and a Thought Ruler Archfiend. Let's see the deck in action.
Like I said in the intro, I know you freaks won't watch anything that isn't explosive. So while we are playing Vayu Turbo, one of the most powerful control decks in the format, I want to show you just how explosive these hands can be. You can see we've opened Raiko, and probably our turn one play is just going to be setting that and passing. Our opponent's going first, they have won the die roll, uh, they're just going to go ahead and set a whole bunch of cards. We can probably get a read that some of that back row is going to prevent us from heavy storming profitably. They go for a gold sark and reveal, unfortunately, a copy of Future Fusion, so we have about two turns to wrap this up. That could either set up an absolute zero play, or reveal five-headed dragon, or even reveal Raptinus, as you'll see momentarily. We draw another Light Sworn, which is not fantastic. We'll go ahead and set that Raikou along with the Trap Dust Shoot, though I don't think it's likely our opponent's going to four. They're just going to pass here. That's one on the Gold Sark, and I think we can actually go for something crazy here, provided on what our mills look like. We're going to flip up this copy of Raikou. We're going to activate the effect. This Raikou is going to target the monster, and we find it's a masked dragon. Okay, we now know it is dragons. We'll mill three, and those are three really good ones. We'll follow it up with the Charge of the Light Brigade. We will mill an additional additional three, an Armageddon Knight, a Vayu, and a Spear Reaper. That's three darks, one of which we can modulate. So here, after adding that third Raikou to hand, we can go ahead and activate the effect of the Plague Spreader in Graveyard, taking a card from our deck and putting it on top of our deck in order to summon the Plague Spreader from the Graveyard. Now we have three darks in our Graveyard, so we're able to just special summon out this Dark Arm Dragon. I call priority, but there is a summon window, and our opponent is going to fire off this copy of Solemn Judgment in response to our Dark Arm Dragon, so we're not going to be able to pop anything. That said, they're now at 4,000, and we do have a pretty powerful play here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and normal summon this copy of Armageddon Knight. We're going to send a Sirocco to the graveyard. That's going to threaten a Vayu Synchro, and then we'll put this Armageddon Knight and this Plague Spreader Zombie uh, into the graveyard and into the Banish Zone, respectively, for a copy of Brianak. I'm going to pitch the remainder of my hand in order to get these two back row, and our opponent's going to return them to the hand, at which point we can either flip up this copy of uh, Trap Dust Shoot in order to ensure that our opponent doesn't gores us, or just attack them for lethal. They're going to concede, and we are going to walk with it. Finally, let's look at something a little more janky. This is BK Kids Club's Gemini deck from the WCQ, which appears to be basically playable exclusively by him. This assemblage of some of Yu-Gi-Oh's least playable super type is responsible for one of its most interesting decks ever, utilizing Gigaplant, Supervise, and a bunch of cards designed to take advantage of the non-hard once per turn effects attached to a bunch of cardboard that Konami figured people wouldn't bother summoning twice. Oh, and Ultimate Offering is legal in this format, did you forget that? Let's go through the card by card. First, we've got two copies of Gigaplant. This card, of course, is a Gemini, which means it's a normal monster while face up on the field and can be normal summoned to turn it into an effect monster with the following effect. It's got once per turn, you can special summon an insect or plant from your hand or graveyard. We're playing one copy of a Vacature Chevalier, which is a Gemini, and can send a face up a quip card you control to the graveyard to target a card your opponent controls and destroy the target. One copy of Tuned Magician, which as a Gemini is treated as a tuner. Two copies of Dark Valkyria, which as a Gemini, once while face up on the field, can put a spell counter on itself, gains 300 for that spell counter, and can remove a spell counter from the card to target a monster in the field, destroy the target. Two copies of Blazewing Butterfly, which as a Gemini, can tribute this card, then target one Gemini monster in your graveyard, except Blazewing Butterfly, special summon that target, and if you do, it becomes an effect monster and gains its effect. Finally, we've got one copy of Neospatian Grand Mole, two Lone Fire Blossom, one Nettles as a two-star plant tuner, and two Gemini Soldier. This is not only your reinforced truth target, but it also, as a Gemini, uh, is not destroyed by battle once per turn, and if it battles after damage calculation, allows you to special a Gemini from your deck except a Gemini Soldier. Next, we've got one copy of Future Fusion, which reveals Raptanius, the Super Alloy Beast. Three copies of Supervise, which, when equipped to a Gemini monster, turns it into an effect monster and gains its effects, and when sent to the graveyard, targets a normal monster in your graveyard, of course including Geminis, and special summons it. Heavy Storm, three upstart goblin, Gemini Spark needs no introduction, tribute to face up level four Gemini monster, target a card on the field, destroy it, and if you do, draw a card, a My Body is a Shield, a Call of the Haunted, a Solemn Judgment, two Dust Tornado, three Legacy of Yada Garasu, one copy of Mirror Force, double reinforced truth, which can special summon a level two or lower warrior type monster from your deck, and prevents you from conducting your battle phase, a Starlight Road, a Torrential Tribute, and two copies of Ultimate Offering. In the extra, we've got Super Alloy Beast, we've got Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, three copies of Black Brute Drago, which once per turn can send a Gemini monster from your hand to the graveyard to destroy one spell or trap your opponent controls, and when destroyed and sent to the graveyard, can target a Gemini monster in your graveyard and special summon it, and the special summoned Gemini monster is treated as an effect monster with its effect. Red Dragon Archfiend, Colossal Fighter, Thought Ruler, Dark End Dragon, Stardust Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, Goyo Guardian, Brianak, and Armory Arm. I like this match a lot because our game against Ellen123 showcases two divergent theories about Edison formats. 
format. Our opponent's on a deck that would have been well respected in the Edison format of 2010. It is a quick draw dandy deck that has a pretty substantial volcanic element. We are playing a deck full of cards that no one was considering playable, so it's a really fun back and forth here. This hand's not fantastic, but for the future fusion and the ultimate offering, if that ultimate offering sticks, we do win the game on the spot. Ultimate offering is a really weird card. It immediately warps the game around it, uh, but it's a weird position to be in here. If my opponent has an MST, a future fusion would do a lot in getting it out of their hand, uh, but if they have a heavy storm, I don't want to set the ultimate offering and the future fusion and potentially run into one of them. Uh, we're just going to play around heavy storm here and unfortunately get cooked by the MST. Probably better to play around that because there's less cards uh, that, uh, like, AoE pop. Uh, our opponent instead is going to go for a charge of the Light Brigade here and mill from the top of their deck a Book of Moon, a Debris Dragon, and a Pot of Avarice, expecting this game is going to go very long. They're going to grab a Ryko Lightsworn Hunter here and then afterwards they're going to activate Foolish Burial to send from deck to graveyard a copy of Volcanic Shell. This is just so over the course of many turns they can have almost infinite material in their hand. Uh, pretty reasonable understanding of uh, how card economy works in 2010 era Edison, uh, but I'm going to try and go for a game shot at some point. Uh, they're going to go for a Volcanic Rocket here. They're going to grab from their deck to their hand a copy of Blaze Accelerator. Uh, then they're going to set one card and go to the battle phase. A pretty reasonable presumption to assume I'm not playing Gores in a deck that's playing Ultimate Offering, but also setting Ultimate Offering means that I expected to have a continuous trap on my side of the field, so they don't necessarily have to play around any of those cards. We're going to go for an Upstart Goblin here. They're going to gain even more life, and Nettles actually makes this hand a lot better. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate future fusion here. They're going to chain Raigeki Break, discarding this copy of Volcanic Shell, but no big deal. We can set this Reinforced Truth and normal somebody Grand Mold to put that copy of Volcanic Rocket back in the hand. The last thing I want is to be taking a ton of damage here if they waste their turn normaling Rocket again. I feel pretty good about it. They're going to go Shell and grab a Shell from deck to hand. That's all of the Shells now accounted for. Then afterwards, they're going to go ahead and normal summon a copy of Volcanic Rocket and get in for 19. We'll just go ahead and take it. No big deal here. Then afterwards, they're going to set one card and we're going to fire off Reinforced Truth because it prevents you from getting to your battle phase, so I don't want to flip it on my own turn. We'll go ahead and get a copy of Gemini Soldier, and we will draw for turn. Now, that's a very good draw, and it really changes how we're going to play this turn. I'm thinking out in my head, I think probably the pick is to tribute summon the Giga Plant and just fire the Supervise, hoping for the best. We're going to do just that. We will tribute summon for the Giga Plant. They allow it. Then we'll activate Supervise, targeting the Giga Plant. They think for a sec and then allow that as well. Afterwards, we'll activate the effect of the Giga Plant and summon from our hand Nettles. This being in a hidden information zone meant our opponent didn't prioritize the Giga Plant or the Supervised Super High, but now we're going to perform a Synchro Summon using the Nettles and the Giga Plant for a Black Brute Draco. Uh, we're going to trigger the effect of the Supervised, and our opponent's going to activate Solemn Judgment. Unfortunately, Black Brute Draco triggers when it's destroyed. It doesn't have to be a card you control. It doesn't have to be on the field. Uh, so we spend a couple minutes negotiating this and looking it up online and find out that not only are we going to trigger the effect of the supervise, we are going to trigger the effect of the Brute Drago as well. So we'll bring back the Giga Plant with the capacity to activate its effect again, and we'll bring back the Soldier from the Supervise as a vanilla. We'll go Giga Plant here again for another Nettles, and then we will go into Brute Drago again! <laughs> this card is so crazy! We'll go to the battle phase and walk over this copy of Volcanic Rocket, uh, putting our opponent not only on a clock, but in a really weird position. It's super difficult to get rid of this card, and they know that we can out-tempo them with the card like Neospatian Grand Mole. They'll draw for turn, and back in the day, you could expect that you weren't going to take a game shot this early just by virtue of the fact that the games played out slower. People were on defensive cards. They were activating the effect of Dandelion every single turn, uh, but now I'm daring them to actually do something productive. They're going to set one card here, the Ryko, and we do know that, I believe, off the charge. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and normal summon this Neospatian Grand Mole and go to the battle phase. This is lethal, so they will concede, and Brew Drago takes one down. Frustrating card to play against, but not one that the average duelist has a lot of experience facing down. So that's that. Thanks so much for watching. These 10 minute testings are functionally subsidized by and frequently suggested by my patrons, including the ones you see in front of you. I want to give a quick shout out to the following, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Brett Henry, Canner, Darkmaster Zork, Derpin Dragon, Devin Senpai, DJ Elephant, Enraged Peacock, Gravity, John Piet, Juan Cruz Avila Zati, Night Mary, Legal Rights, Lockstone, Luis Hernandez, Matthew M. Derezzo, MBT Play Medolce, Melfi Stan, Mike Carlotti, N54 Lionheart, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Solar Flare the Ricka Queen, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Who's Nick, Wonder Waffle, and Yuki. I couldn't have done it without you. The best part of waking up.
is Folgers in your cup.